Hi, welcome to Vicky Mates and Builds. I am back with another large puzzle today. I just can't seem to keep away from them. It has actually only been a couple of weeks since I finished my 9,000 piece puzzle. Um, it will seem like longer because this video isn't gonna go up for a couple of weeks, but um, at the time of filming, it's only been a couple of weeks. And every time I see this puzzle on the shelf, uh, my fingers just itch to start it. <laughs> so I have succumbed uh, to the need to be working on a really big puzzle and uh, decided to make a start on the Educa 6000 piece entering the bedroom puzzle. Here is a picture of it just now. I actually, um, I've had my eye on this puzzle for quite a long time and I decided to purchase it at the beginning of the year, uh, this year, 2022. And so it's been sitting on my shelf because I, I worked on my 9K uh, Disney Museum puzzle first and um, the time has come to go back to doing uh, another 6K and uh, my first Educa puzzle as well. It's It's been a, a sort of a phase of firsts for me. I've, I've bought a few new puzzles recently and um, from companies that I haven't tried yet. Um, it's been fun trying out some new uh, puzzle brands and Educa will be another. Now, my dream puzzle is actually an Educa puzzle. I have been wanting to get hold of the 33,600 piece wildlife puzzle by Educa for quite a long time. And um, it's available for me to get. I can get it on the UK Amazon, but the price is fluctuating wildly. Every time I look at it, the price changes. And I've just been sort of waiting till I've saved a bit and trying to um, get it, you know, when it's a fairly reasonable price. And I'm hopeful that I will get it soon. But I consider this puzzle to be my um, build up to that one, if you like. This will be my tester. Um, I have heard good things about Educa puzzles. I'm sure that I will enjoy it. I love the image on this puzzle. I really, I just love all the colours all the animals, just the detail on it. I just, I think it's a lovely, lovely picture. And I just think it's kind of cool the way they're all coming out of a big doorway into a bedroom and you've got kind of, you've got kind of wild meets civilization sort of thing. Um, so uh, yeah, I cannot, I cannot wait to get started on this. I'm going to unbox it and have a look at the pieces and see um, what educate pieces are like. And then I'll get on with building it. Well, get on with sorting it. <laughs> hmm. And then I'll get on with building it. So here we go. Unboxing the Educa 6000 piece, entering the bedroom puzzle. Enjoy. I'll get the box opened up. Now there's no cellophane to take off this one. And that isn't because it didn't come with cellophane. It did, but I actually opened it a while ago, took the cellophane off to find out if there was more than one bag of pieces in here. Somebody I think suggested that it was uh, split into sections and I didn't think it was. And I double checked and it isn't. It's just one big bag of 6,000 pieces. So I'll just remove the lid just now and show you that bag. I haven't opened the bag yet. So this is the bag of pieces. It's obviously very large quite heavy um, and underneath that bag there is nothing else this box does not come with any kind of paperwork there's no poster which you know isn't too much of a bother I, I didn't have a poster for my other 6k which was a Clementoni um, so you know it's fine but I, I just, sometimes it's quite useful to have a poster to refer to because uh, I tend to, for the big puzzles especially, I tend to use the lids for the pieces that I've sorted. Um, and obviously the lid is the only other thing that has the image on. So, uh, you know, just, it would have been nice, but I, I'm not kind of too cut up about it. Um, and there's no other sort of leaflet, really. I guess the information that they have um, given you has been printed on the outside edge of the inner box. Uh, so if you can see here. Uh, there's a lot of information. Now, it, I think that it's actual fact all of the same information, but just in several different languages. And it talks about how you go about ordering a lost piece. So that's great. I mean, that kind of eases my mind uh, from the beginning. Anyway, so I'm going to open up this bag of pieces. Uh, so. Oh, strong plastic. <laughs> I never get 
get scissors for these? I really don't know why. I should. I should. Right, so, in we go. Opening the 6k puzzle. Yay! Ah. And out they come. And a big mountain. And there's two left in the bag. So, the pieces have been liberated. And, yeah. Um, so, right, okay. Oh, I can feel the dust. I suspect this one might have quite a bit of dust. It's got the blue, the blue cardboard backing. It's not dark blue, but it's... Uh, Kind of a light blue cardboard backing. The pieces feel pretty thick, pretty sturdy. Um, what you'd expect from kind of a well-known brand. Um, they tend to be quite stretch looking, uh, sort of long and thin. Um, so, you know, if you were to take out just the, the foundation of the piece and remove kind of the knobs and the, the ins and the outs, You'd have a long, thin, you'd have an oblong rather than a square. So they're not sort of particularly squared off. Uh, but that's okay. I mean, that's not a bother. It's just an observation. Um, and yeah, the image looks nice and clear. Slightly on the glossy side, but not over the top. Doesn't kind of have the woven quality that... Um, that Clementoni puzzles that I've done has, but that again, that's okay. It's just something I particularly like about those pieces. But for me, as long as they are not too overly shiny and glossy, uh, then I'm happy. So I'm just gonna do a quick rummage through the pieces just because, well, you have to, you know, on a new puzzle. <laughs> it's like puzzling law. Uh, <laughs> And yeah, oh, these look good. They look good. I then I think I maybe have spotted one stuck together, but actually I'm quite impressed that there's hardly any, there's, there's none. I can't see any now that's stuck together. I normally get at least one. Uh, oh, there's one. Found one. There we go. Uh, but yeah, um, not stuck together by very much. Just kind of a tiny bit of card that's uh, I'm able to pull apart. So that's fine. Uh, yeah, I suspect there might be quite a lot of dust. It's, my hands feel dusty already. But again, there's 6,000 pieces in here. So, you know, I can forgive I can forgive uh, large puzzles um, some dust. It's, it's bound to happen. And it's not really something that particularly bothers me anyway. But it might bother some people. But, uh, yeah. Oh. Right, I think I'm going to stop talking. I've said enough about the pieces themselves. Um, yeah, box opened. Sorting must begin. Last batch of pieces to sort. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> And one thing I've discovered about Educa puzzles, lots and lots of dust. Right, the sorting is done. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to go through these pieces, um, starting with this box, because it's the nearest one to me. This is every piece that I could find with either sort of pinks and reds uh, in them. So, uh, looking at the box, that will mean that those pieces are pretty much scattered throughout the puzzle, but there's a lot of red in this carpet. Uh, there's some flowers here. There's a little bit of pink on this parrot behind the 6,000. You've got a flamingo and some flowers there. Uh, there's a red on this bird here. Looks like a pheasant or something. Um, so, yeah, so the red's going to be kind of all over, but that pile isn't too bad. Um, so that's that pile. This pile is um, bright yellows. Any that I could find that were bright yellow. A lot of these piles are sorted by colour. Um, so I guess bright yellows will probably be this area here. 
Um, there might be some kind of brighter leaves and foliage and maybe a little bit of the parrot as well. But that's the pile of bright yellows. Uh, that pile there, that quite big pile there is sort of any pieces I could find that were kind of this purpley colour um, uh, or sort of blue. Sometimes they're a bit lighter, uh, but any I could find like that, I believe that those pieces will largely be ceiling and some of the wall because it's kind of like sky. Um, so that's that pile there. And then there's a whole bunch of smaller piles in this box, a bit more detailed. These are pieces that um, were kind of stood out to me as being obviously part of the giraffe. These ones are a bit more detailed. These are ones I could find with sort of blue and this kind of yellowy white colour, both of them together on the piece. And some of them were blue and kind of orange. So I suspect they will be maybe this area behind this whale um, behind this killer whale that's jumping out of the water. So that's that pile there. That pile is supposed to be tiger pieces. There's quite a big tiger and a tiger cub walking along beside it. Um, but as I say, that again is quite a small pile. I think I have mixed some of those tiger pieces up with other piles. But I'll kind of get to that and let you know. Some of them are really obvious. You can see the stripes, but there are some where it's just kind of orange and it's a bit difficult to tell. But anyway, that's tiger pieces. That's sort of miscellaneous turquoisey blue kind of pieces. Um, so I've, I've got another pile a bit like that. Um, although these are more kind of this shade of blue here, this this sort of watery shade of blue. Um, so as I say, I think that and possibly that and that will go um, together with the the this picture here with the killer whale jumping out of it. This one, I'm not really sure what I was going for with this pile. <laughs> I, I ended up kind of putting pieces in here that were this sort of turquoise and purple. Um, I'm not sure which part of the picture that is. Possibly a bit of a butterfly or something like that. Something really colourful. Um, so that's those piles there. And this one here is kind of pieces I could find that were sort of cream or beige or sort of white in colour. Um, so that'll that'll be scattered across the puzzle, I'm sure. P different parts of different animals. Um, I've already mentioned that. Small blue pieces. This is cat pieces. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cats on this puzzle that I can spot. Obviously the leopard and cheetah, they have spots as opposed to stripes like the tiger. So, you know, I was able to tell a lot of the spotty pieces. There's a lot of leopard and cheetah in here, but I think there are probably some tiger pieces in here. They're all kind of similar shade of orange um, and similar to the lion as well. So um, I'm going to call that the big cat pile. This one here is all the pieces I could find that were this um, swirly kind of wallpaper pattern. So it's a little quite obvious really when I found one of those pieces. So that's that's a nice sort of distinct pile of pieces there, the wallpaper. That is zebra pieces. They were quite um, easy to spot in the black and white stripes so that's a nice simple pile uh this one is it's another big pile because it's kind of sorted by color and again i suspect there's a lot of big cat pieces in here because they're all kind of shades of dark yellow and orange um so it might also have pieces of this frame here this doorway that the animals are coming out of um and possibly pieces of this couch here that the animals are laying on. Um, so that's a pile of those, that's a fairly big pile. Um, and this one, it's a little bit miscellaneous, this one, but largely these are really kind of dark pieces, kind of dull sort of brown colours um, and a few miscellaneous ones that I wasn't really sure what to do with. That's edges in that tin there. Uh, and that leaves the largest pile of pieces, which is this here, which as you can probably tell is green pieces. Um, Green I'm going to be doing last and this is definitely, definitely going to need a resort. I think these larger piles, those two in particular and this one, not so much those, they're not so big, but uh, definitely those three, they're going to need resorts. And I'm going to be approaching those last because I think that once I have tackled all these piles, I'm going to be familiar enough with the puzzle to know and to be able to spot 
what these pieces are when I come to them, I'll be able to say, oh yeah, that's a couch piece or oh yeah, that's a, a lion piece or whatever. Um, the greens, there's a lot of green in this picture uh, with it being a kind of a jungle scene. Um, so that's gonna be last. There's lots of different shades of greens. You've got bright ones here at the bottom and you've got some kind of darker, duller forest type greens at the top here. So that's gonna need a resort, but I'm happy with that so far. These pieces can just kind of go away while I'm working on these other piles. Um, just a couple of things I wanted to point out with regard to these pieces. And that is I found a couple of slightly odd shapes. Um, the first one being this one here. Um, there aren't many of those. Most of them are just the standard shaped pieces. Uh, just all the different standard shaped pieces. But there, there's the odd one with... Uh, this kind of extra knob on one side where you've got an in and an out on the same side. The other one I found is this type of piece where it almost looks as though it's been cut in half. Uh, like It's like a bigger piece cut in half. You've got kind of a bump rather than an actual sort of tab. Um, and there are corresponding pieces I've found, obviously, where the bump sort of slots in. Um, I mean, I've seen videos uh, of Educa puzzles and I've sort of seen this kind of funny shaped piece crop up. Yeah, so that was just an observation uh, that I was making about the pieces. I I do like the pieces. They're really colourful. I'm really looking forward to seeing this puzzle done. They're just a little bit shiny, but it I, I, I think it probably will suit this puzzle and suit the picture just because of all of the colours. I think it's going to almost sparkle at the end of it. This puzzle is going to be really good, I think. So I'm looking forward to getting started. As to where I'm going to start, I'll do the edges. Then I'll go for the zebra and then I'll tackle some of these small, smaller piles, the giraffe, this, these blues, maybe a bit of the tiger and some of these smaller piles. And I'll just build up to the medium sized piles, the reds, the yellows, purples, uh, the wall pieces and uh, just build up from there. So starting with the edge, followed by the zebra. Right, the edges is as done as I can do it now. Um, I've obviously had to break it up because my table isn't big enough uh, to put the whole thing together. This um, side is complete except for one piece, piece that goes between that one and that one. That's the tail of a um, lemur, I think. Uh, the bottom, I believe, is complete. Um, the top, I will need to count the pieces because they're all kind of the same colour, or at least most of them are. Um, and I'm not sure if I've got a couple in the wrong place, uh, but it's possible that I may have a piece missing. I'll actually go away and count them uh, just now and I'll let you know. Just bear with me. Yeah, so I've just counted the bottom row, which is complete, and there's 81 pieces in that. And I've just counted the top row, and I have 81 pieces there as well. So I think one of these purple pieces might be in the wrong place. Um, and I've not quite been able to get those together yet. But I'm not too worried at this stage if the edge isn't complete. I'm really just doing it at this point to orient myself within the puzzle, really, so that I can... When I'm doing the wallpaper pieces, I can actually attach them to this kind of corner here. Um, maybe when I get to do some of the, you know, the cheetah pieces or leopard, um, I could attach it to there uh, and the carpet and so on and so forth. So um, it's good that the, the edge is, is as done as I can do it. Um, those pieces will come together at some stage, but I do believe I have a piece missing there and a piece missing there. So they, must have been missorted, I think. They'll end up being in one of the other piles. So I will pop those in as and when I find them. But otherwise, yeah, pleased with progress so far. The edge is more or less <laughs> done.
Okay, so I've put together as much as I can of the zebra. And there's a couple of wee gaps where I've obviously missorted into a different pile. There's a few here where I don't think they are zebra pieces, uh, but they've got kind of a stripe element to them. So I've just missorted those as well. So I will um, reallocate those ones accordingly. Uh, but I actually really enjoyed doing the zebra. It was nice having a definite kind of pattern on the pieces to work with and it came together really nicely. I've also, um, just to point out, put in my first bunch of kind of oddly shaped pieces. So um, there's a concave piece that abuts against like a convex piece just there. And then these pieces with the extra knob on one side um, seem to go on either side of it. So um, my best guess is that other parts of the puzzle with those pieces in will go in this kind of pattern where you've got the two oddly shaped pieces on either side of the two that just kind of butt together. Um, so yeah, glad to have put in one of those. Um, but yeah, otherwise it's really good, really, really good so far. So moving on now, I think I'm going to work on the blue pieces next. Okay, so all of my blue piles of pieces are pretty much in. I've sort of discovered where they all go. Most of them went in this bit here, which is the picture on the wall on the sort of left-hand side, um, where you've got a, a killer whale jumping out of the picture and you've got another whale there um, underneath the water. And there's a little bit of blue with the sky. Um, so... That was fine. Some of these colours were mixed up in the other blue piles because obviously the blue on the killer whale is just a little bit darker. But I was pretty, once I'd started to put that together, I was pretty easily able to identify those pieces. So they went in nicely. Um, this bird here is a very, very similar blue. So there were co a couple of these pieces that I thought went in here. Um, but I didn't realise till near the end actually uh, belonged to this blue bird. Um, there was a separate pile. Uh, I think I had three different lots of kind of blue piles. There, there was a separate one where I found quite a few of these. It's like a different area of water. And again, I thought they went in here somewhere. But I actually think that they, they belong uh, down here near the tiger and near the hippo. Um, you've got a little bit of blue there. Um, so I think you can just about see the hippo's mouth there just on the right hand side. So I've kind of left a few pieces around that area where it doesn't quite fit in yet, but I know that they belong uh, there. And the others belonged, the other blue pieces belonged to animals, which was, it was kind of obvious to be honest. I could tell um, what were butterfly wings largely. So I've got a little cluster of butterflies here. There is a blue butterfly there, there's one there, there is one away over here, uh, or oh, a little tiny one there. So I've got a little cluster of butterflies as well, and these 
gorgeous blues and purples belong to um, the tail of the uh, macaw parrot, which you can't really see very well on the box because it's behind uh, the writing, but um, you can see there you've got all these lovely turquoise and purples that actually attach to the edge. So yeah, it's coming together really nicely. I'm really, really enjoying the pieces on this puzzle. It it's just the colours on them. They're just, they, they pop. They're just so bright and vibrant. I mean, this, just gorgeous purples and blues and turquoise and, oh, just really, really lovely. Uh, and these butterflies. I, I love the colours. I love the colours on this puzzle a lot. So I've been really enjoying it. Even just the small bit I've put together already, I've thoroughly enjoyed it so far. I'm thinking... Next, I will, I'm going to hit the purple pieces. And the reason I'm saying that is because uh, I'll just show you here. There's quite a lot of these purple pieces, but what I found in some of the blue pieces, you see these uh, pieces where there's some blue and some kind of cream where this, the water meets like the edge of the frame. Um, I had actually mixed up some of those pieces, uh, mixed up some of these pieces in with those. And I'm talking about pieces like this, where it's like a bit of brown and a bit of purpley blue. And what those pieces are, are in fact, where the sky bit meets the main door frame. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get, it's quite a big pile. I'm going to go through this pile and just separate out these pieces like this, where there's a bit of frame and a bit of sky and put those together. And I will probably be able to attach this bird to that because the bird's kind of flying across the frame. Um, and then from there, I'm hopeful to get some sky pieces fitted in, which is basically all the rest of these, and also attach the top edge to that as well. So that'll be quite a big chunk done once I've done that. So I think I'm gonna tackle that next uh, and then decide what I'm gonna move on to from there. Right, so doing this door frame that the animals are coming through has turned out to be a bit trickier than I thought because I was getting confused because I seem to have loads of um, lines of kind of door frame and what I thought was door frame, but that actually turned out to be another picture. Now, the reason I just didn't notice there was another picture is because on the box, it's mostly obscured by this giant Educa logo and, you know, the, the last two zeros of the 6,000. So all you can really see of it is just this line here. And I just kind of just glossed over it. And then obviously when I realised I had kind of too many corners and too many sort of wooden frames, I thought there's something I'm missing here. So what I've been having to do to a certain extent is look at this tiny little image here that's on the side of the box that's actually the full picture. Uh, but yeah, it's been that it was a little bit difficult. So anyway, once I'd figured that out, that there was another picture, I sort of managed to get just kind of an area in here that was sort of together and a bunch of pieces that I know goes in this area. Um, and there's a bird attached to that as well, which I'm hopeful I can kind of get attached to the top edge at some point. There's a little bit here, but it's not sort of attached to this bit yet. Um, this bit of the frame is attached to the top edge and I've managed to get the blue bird in as well. Um, I've shifted around as well some of the uh, the top edge pieces because I had some in the wrong place. I've not quite got that figured out yet but mostly it's there so basically I was coming a bit to a halt because there were obviously some pieces that I was missing that I'd missorted sorted into other piles so what I did was I went away to this pile here which is the pile of 
<clears throat> it was kind of a miscellaneous pile, but it was like light coloured and whitish, creamish kind of pieces because I thought possibly a few of these sky pieces and the bird pieces and bits that are inside this picture, I thought maybe a few might have gone in there. And I was right. I've pulled out a few. There's some frame pieces here, look. Um, I think I may have found a couple that actually belong to this whale uh, in there as well. So, um, so yeah, this bit's been a bit sort of tricky and tough because I've had to be a bit back and forth. And I think what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to, I'm not going to do kind of the main sky as yet. Uh, the rest of those are in there. I've thinned them down quite a lot. Um, but I'm going to come back to those. I'm going to leave those in that box, come back to those, kind of tidy up a lot of these loose pieces. And um, I'll put in as many of these as I can. I'm really trying to kind of shape this corner up a little bit. And then once I've done that, um, I'm going to have a go at the this bit here where the wallpaper is. That's these pieces here. Um, so I'm just going to do that just now. Okay, so these yellow pieces have actually come together quite nicely and for the most part they make up um, this area here where the sun's setting just above the elephant's head. Uh, I've sort of decided since doing this uh, colour that I think I'm going to work on a different pile of pieces next to the red ones. I was going to do the red pieces next, red and pinks. But because I'm putting together this bit and it's turning into quite a large section and because I've also managed to attach some of the kind of the doorway pieces to it, what I'd like to be able to do is ultimately attach this to the actual doorway itself. Um, uh, just to try and avoid having lots of floaty bits of puzzle, really. Um, so I'm going to instead rummage through this pile here, which is uh, all the kind of dark orangey pieces um, and find as many as I can of this door frame uh, because I think they're going to be in there for the most part. And what I'll do is I'll put the door frame out on the table um, as a whole. I'll have to get the little bit I've done on the other side of the puzzle and I will um, put together as much of that frame as I can and then try and attach this sky area to that frame. And then once I've done that, that hopefully will narrow down these pieces quite a lot um any sort of spare yellow pieces that i have still floating around here i can just put to one side maybe on another board or a piece of paper until i find where they go um and then after that i will then tackle the red pieces um just a very slight change of plan just to kind of make the puzzle a bit more cohesive at this stage because i'm still you know i don't like having lots of kind of floaty areas um, I'd rather attach them to the main puzzle if I possibly can. So, um, yeah, slight alteration of plan. I'm going to braid through these pieces next, try and get this frame done and uh, attach this bit. And then I'll do the reds. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to get on with that just now.
Okay, so I've kind of roughly sorted through the, the red pieces that I had. And for the most part, um, the biggest pile is this one here. And this is all of the pieces that make up the carpet on the ground, um, which is actually quite a big section. And I think it's going to be good to get this done because I think it will help to kind of mold the puzzle together a little bit more. Um, but it also, uh, a large part of it also makes up flowers, which is all these pieces here, and uh, parrot plumage, mostly, sort of bird plumage. Um, there's a few uh, brightly coloured uh, parrot feathers in this little pile here, including the parrot that's flying up in the top left corner, which I've got a nice gap for uh, where I've done the wall. So that'll be good to fill those in. There are a few parrot pieces in here that I just sort of threw in because they were a similar shade of pink but I think like there I think they're bits of a parrot's tail um so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on these piles of pieces next um probably starting with the parrot and the flowers and then I will work on this these floor pieces and um, the only ones I have left of the red pile now it's a lot smaller are other pieces that are sort of really dark red, almost brown, um, that I think belong to various other animals and possibly there some parts of the doorway that I can't fit in yet. Um, so I've just popped those to one side um, and I'll come back to those at a later point. Um, but yeah, so yeah, looking forward to getting started on all these red pieces. Okay, I'm very much working off the boards now with this puzzle, sort of from this point forward, basically. So I've just laid them out on the floor here just to um, give you an overview of what the whole puzzle looks like now. It's kind of hard to tell when I'm doing close up time lapses of it, um, where I'm at sort of as a whole. But um, basically, I'm approaching the, I'd say I'm past a third of the way through. Not quite at the midpoint yet, but um, getting there. That top left quadrant is by far 
the most done and filled out, followed by probably the top right. We've got the zebra in pretty much the middle of the puzzle, who's kind of still floating. And this carpeted area has filled out a, a little bit more of this bottom right quadrant and the bottom left, but there's a large gap there. Um, it's really very much a puzzle that's kind of working its way in from the outside. Um, there are still floaty bits that I've not been able to attach yet. Things like the flowers and butterflies, uh, bits of the sky, things like that. I've put them roughly where I think they go. Um, I'd really like to get those attached uh, pretty soon. But I think before I wrap up this part one, I'd like to get... Uh, a bit more of this puzzle done. So I think what I'm going to work on next is I've got a few pieces that are um, leftovers from the piles that I've completed or almost completed. And I've just been kind of dumping them in this box. There are a few on pieces of paper. They're sort of sections that I've managed to put together that, um, well, some of them are, that I've just not wanted to put on the puzzle yet because I've not really known where they go. But um I sort of want to try and get rid of a few of these pieces. So I think what I'm going to do, a lot of these pieces are kind of purple, shades of purple. And I think that they might belong to either this lemur here, which sort of has kind of a purpley tinge to its fur, but also, um, no, where is it? I've lost it. There it is. This bird here, this wading bird, that's sort of a kind of whitish purple colour. Um, and I think that a lot of those pieces, they they got mixed in with the sky pieces. And I think that a lot of those will cover the, um, the lima and the wading bird. So I'm wondering if I can try and just put a few of those pieces together and get another little section put together. Thin out these just miscellaneous leftover pieces a bit. And the other thing I wanted to do was to work on, um, to just have a rummage through the white pieces that I've got, um, I'll show you those actually. So here's the lighter coloured pieces. I have actually had a shuffle through them before. I think they are going to fill a few gaps out. So you've got, for example, that bird at the top with that's got kind of a white wing. Um, there's a few lighter coloured pieces in that frame where the killer whale is. Um, and I'd like to fill out a few gaps. So I was going to have a quick rummage through those pieces, pull out a few of these pieces as well, because I think I've put crocodile pieces in here. Uh, the crocodile goes in this bottom left corner and that will help fill out that bottom quadrant a bit. So I'm going to have a rummage through those, try and get that pile down a bit. And also these dark pieces, that's one of our miscellaneous piles. And I think if I have a rummage through that, that will probably fill in a few gaps as well um things like the picture frame pieces that are missing from there there's a few missing from that picture as well um i don't know possibly the doorway area so my next couple of steps are going to be really just tidying things up a bit getting rid of some of the leftover pieces rummaging through a couple of the miscellaneous piles to fill out some gaps and then after that i want to do the cat the spotty cats. This is my pile of spots and um, that will again help fill out that quadrant a bit where that cat's lying on the log and there is also a cat in this bottom left quadrant um, and I think once I've got those done that's probably going to be me about the midway point of this puzzle um, and I can maybe finish the video there. So that's my plan just now.
right, I'm a bit further away from you this time because I decided to do a, a further away shot with the puzzle in front of me. You can only see the top of it at the minute. Um, uh, this is the box beside me. But uh, anyway, I think that just about wraps it up for the part one uh, of this particular puzzle. I <laughs> Initial thoughts on this puzzle. I... I say this every time because I only pick puzzles that I do enjoy, but I have really, really, really enjoyed 100% of the process of doing this puzzle. I, I just find with this one that it's so immersive, like, I don't know if you know that feeling where, you, you know, you find an amazing book uh, to read and you can't put it down and you just completely lose yourself in it. Well, that that's the feeling I've been getting when I've been building this puzzle. I think it's just because the nature of the image being, um, you know, wildlife coming out at you and entering into your world, I think it's partially that uh, that makes it so immersive, but also the fact that the colours are so, so vibrant and bright that it gives the whole image a vividness that just makes it feel like it's popping out at you. And I've just enjoyed every minute. It's such a nice puzzle to work on. It's just been a joy. The whole the whole thing has just been a joy. Um, so that's my first initial thought, like really, really positive thoughts on this puzzle. Uh, really um, very, very glad that I'm enjoying my first edgy cut puzzle, I have to say. Uh, as far as pieces go, um, there's pros and cons. I I think that the pieces overall are quite nice, um, fairly good thickness. Um, there is a, a slightly glossy element to them. No, it's not too bad, but uh, they're a little bit glossier than I would normally like. However, I it's not affected my uh, building of the puzzle. It's not been too kind of reflective or shiny at any point. Um, and I actually think that the the pieces for this puzzle suit that suit it um, because it just makes the colours pop out at you. Um, and it's been, it's part of what's made it really, really, really fun to do. Um, the pieces are really easy to orient. So that's another kind of positive aspect of it. They sit, because they're sort of stretched, like I said at the very beginning of the video, um, they sit either in a landscape or a portrait orientation. It was obvious it was going to be that way at first. And it, in this case, they all sit landscape. Um, now, that has actually made it easy in a couple of areas where I've had to shape sort. Like, for example, when I was doing the leopards uh, there and there, they um, I did have to do a little bit of shape sorting on those. And it just narrowed down the piece placement a lot because I just was able to just put them all in the right kind of orientation. So that's been something that's really helped. My only gripe with the pieces is that they don't hold together very well at all. Um, I have heard that about Educa puzzles, that they don't... This, sections that you build don't really hold together, which has made it frustrating at times when I've tried to move things into place, which with big puzzles, I have to do that a lot because I tend to build the sections separately and then put them into place in the wider puzzle or on the boards. And so, you know, when I'm trying to move a section, you just can't do it because it falls apart. So one tip I will give with this puzzle uh, that's really helped me, and in particular with large puzzles generally, is to use pieces of paper um, to actually build the set some of your sections on, especially bigger sections, so that you can then just pick up the piece of paper and slide the sections off onto the puzzle. And there's no, you know, disaster where the whole section you've built just crumbles and you have to kind of rebuild it again. Um, I actually had a load of pieces of paper uh, already taped together um, from doing the Disney Orchestra puzzle. So uh, not the Disney Orchestra, sorry. The Disney Museum. Um, I actually had a, a bunch of sheets of paper taped together that I'd used during that puzzle so I just pulled them out again and I've used them to uh, do a lot of the sections of this puzzle. That's been really really handy. As far as the difficulty level goes this puzzle I would say is, is moderate difficulty. I found it quite easy to start with. I started off at the top, really, top corners and sort of top of the middle of the puzzle. And, but I don't know if you'll have noticed, that is like the least busy area of the puzzle. So, um, you know, you've got a few birds and you've got, well, you've got two birds, you've got a giraffe's head and you've got a whale jumping out of the picture. Um, but aside from everything that's inside the door frame, 
it's that's it really whereas the rest of the puzzle kind of from the door frame going down is just chock full of details and little animals and insects and colors and it's just really really busy so with me starting at the top of the puzzle and starting with the kind of the less busy areas of the puzzle I found it came together a lot more quickly and it you know the difficulty level wasn't too high it was fine um and then it started I started to slow down a bit um and it got a little bit more difficult when I was working on things like butterflies flowers birds uh, parrots leopards things like that um and then you know it all became quite bitty at that point and um lots of sort of shuffling back and forth on the boards and things like that so um you know I, it isn't beyond what i'd expect really so uh it's it's not kind of stumped me at any point it's just got a bit more difficult and a bit progress has been a bit slower as i've gone along as the puzzles become more detailed and i've been doing smaller little sections um and you'll see from the picture that there still are a lot of little floating sections that i've not managed to attach yet the zebra is probably the biggest one i've not been able to attach yet but um that's obviously slowly uh coming together and little bits are starting to attach um fairly often now so really that's all i have to say about it um up to this point i want to give timings and measurements um in you know when i've completed the puzzle in the part two video for this but, but yeah um so far just a really really enjoyable experience so i'd say next steps with this puzzle are to tackle um, I still have some reds left, but they're all kind of dark red and sort of almost brown. And I now believe that they are actually part of the couch uh, that's in the bottom corner that the leopard is laying on. Um, so I'm going to put those together, but I'm also going to pull in the, the dark oranges as well. Really lay into that pile um, because I think most of those pieces will now be... Um, the couch cushions so yeah really will be kind of really filling out that bottom left corner doing that couch and then after that um there'll probably be quite a few leftover pieces so it'll be filling in some gaps keep on raiding that light and dark pieces piles um because uh, the more i'm doing of the puzzle the more i'm sort of finding areas where those pieces go in and they're kind of really gap fillers those piles at the moment so i suspect that'll come next after that and then it will be um, finishing the cats, uh, the lions, the tigers, as well as all of the greens. So, I mean, I very much kind of go by feel when I'm building puzzles. So, you know, the plan might change, but that's my initial thinking on this uh, for part two. So, um, yeah, look out for that. I'm not sure if it'll be next week or if I'll maybe do a smaller puzzle next week and... Um, perhaps the second half of this one after that. It depends on how quickly I manage to get it done. Um, but yeah, so there's nothing else to say on this puzzle, but I do have one more thing to say on another Edgeica puzzle. Uh, I mentioned at the very beginning of this video that I had an update on the 33K wildlife puzzle by Edgeica. Um, I bought it. <laughs> Yay! I actually hit the buy button and I'm so, so excited, but I haven't got it yet. It's not arrived yet. Amazon told me it would be between the 20th and the 23rd. We're past that date now. Um, but they, I, I think that was an estimation really. They they don't know uh, what the tracking information is on it. I got in touch with the seller. They have told me they think it will be around about May the 4th. So um, look out for an unboxing video on that because pretty much as soon as it comes through the door, I am going to do an unboxing video for it. <laughs> And I will get that up on the channel as soon as that's done. So that is some exciting stuff to come. Um, but yeah, aside from that, if you liked this video, please drop a like on the video. If you have not subscribed to my channel yet, please do consider subscribing. I really hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you next time. In the meantime, happy puzzling. Bye bye.